see me as well. Hope. Perfect. Thank you for uh, having me here. I think it was a very interesting session what we heard uh, during these couple of days. And it was quite inspiring for us, especially as a customer to most of the tools and techniques that has been demonstrated during a couple of uh, various sessions uh, or this OSLC Fest. So it's actually excited me more now. Uh, maybe I should start. I'm here not really talking more about OSLC itself, but uh, but as a customer, as a as a as an enterprise solutions, how we see the need of such a technology, and how we see it towards by showing one of the case study that we implement. So it's it's still a very beginning phase of this process, but it's a it's a very interesting journey that we are we have taken on. So I will uh, present a couple of things uh, on this area what we are doing. So my name is Sunil Kapilich, and I'm working as a lead architect and solution architect within Scania, primarily uh, supporting R&D domain in the product development. Uh, we have applications, uh, portfolio around 175 applications, ranging from PLM, ALM, ERPs, test simulation, and so on. So it's a quite a broad spectrum of uh, technology tools and uh, uh, applications. <clears throat> so, uh, before going into a little bit details, I would like to take a little lighter note. <laughs> Apart from working technology and architecture, and my hobbies like trekking and photography, I also like to see, especially those who are in Sweden, uh, this is a part of the cricket part that, uh, that I'm also participating and playing in Sweden. So those who are a bit interested, yeah, feel free to get yourself a little bit engaged in a sport area that's a bit new to Sweden, maybe. Okay, so why are we here today? Uh, it's mainly to share our experience and expectation on this uh, RDF uh, and OSLC technique and technology and its usage. Uh, we are, I'm gonna talk today a bit about our enable collaboration use case, where we would like to ensure that we track the engineering data between our OEM partners and suppliers. Uh, this presentation is primarily aiming at the, the describing the business need, the challenges, the architecture, learnings, and a little bit looking forward. Uh, this topic is quite big, as you can imagine. So we are only focusing on a very specific part of this today. It's a knowledge graph technology and its usage. So I think uh, it was good that uh, my colleague, Damir, already made a good presentation about Scania. And, and hopefully you already know now that uh, Scan is one of the leading truck manufacturer provider of heavy engineering vehicles. And uh, we are uh, leading partners in the <clears throat> transport industry uh, for providing transport solutions. So I'm not gonna go in detail now, but as you probably also know that Scania is not only uh, uh, one of its own premium brand, but it's also a part of a larger group called Triton, which is previously known as Volkswagen Truck and Bus, uh, which is just a rebranding now with the Triton. And Triton consists of various partners here. As you see, Scania, MI, Volkswagen Omnibus, and very recently, Triton has also acquired uh, Navistar, the US uh, truck manufacturer. So the family has grown now, and that means our challenges are also grown. And one of the challenges that I'm going to talk about is exactly related to this uh, multi-band engineering collaboration. So what is the context here? The context is uh, we as a Scania would like to enable the Triton partner brands for the joint development, integration and use of our common components within the group to benefit the intellectual synergy and global scale. This is just an illustration example that Scania design, develop, and produce various components like gearbox, engines, softwares, etc. And those are basically integrated and used by our partner brands like MI and Navistar and also others. Of course, this illustration is not is all focusing from Scania to MI and Navistar, but it's also applicable in a reverse direction when when 
some of the components are owned and designed by our partner brands. So to be able to uh, work with this uh, engineering collaboration, the reason is of course, to, to get the partnerships and accelerated growth, scale and efficiency, and, and the, the benefit of multi-brand engineering collaboration itself with, with the resources, uh, times, R&D investments, and so on. So what is our foundation to this technology for growth? <clears throat> so I think we, we talked within Scania now, as probably a lot of other good uh, presentations as previously mentioned, that uh, digital trade, digital twin, and I would like to also emphasize on digital trust is, is one of the key pillars now to, to, to sustain and to ensure that we can deliver our products with a high quality and with a rapid pace of change. And this is uh, something, of course, uh, is not sufficient to say it on, on, uh, uh, on just paper. We, we need to implement that uh, with, with the various tools, techniques, and, and methods also. So digital thread is one of the topics that we will touch a little bit here. Other topics, of course, as I said, there are multiple different solutions that we are working with. So how do we achieve this digital thread? It's, it's primarily we focus on building knowledge graphs solutions around it. Uh, and what is it really? Uh, and as, as you, most of you here in this uh, conference are quite expertise on this topic. So probably it's not so much for me to tell you, but it's just to uh, provide in context here that it is one of the leading trend uh, which is emerging and which will have a, some sort of a long life cycle also, especially if you look at the hype cycle from Gartner. And this is used primarily in many domains uh, and many interesting use cases, not necessarily in automobile domain, but uh, with other domains as well. Uh, and here are some of the use cases. And we, we got inspired from this and we also see that there's a great benefit of uh, having our own footstep into this uh, domain. So in short, knowledge graph is, is, uh, is data with a lot of good relationships between the data to create a dynamic context and then apply semantics, the, the business rule, the business context to it, so that you, you get a knowledge, the meaning out of it. So deep dynamic context. And that's basically the knowledge graph, uh, which is providing a various good benefits, it's basically bridging data silos. And as you can imagine, uh, and you will probably also see in some of the slides that uh, it's a big ecosystem of systems. It's, it's, a, it's a machinery. And it is built in a traditional legacy way with the siloed processes, siloed data models or data classes. And now it's a, it's a, everywhere we see the need of traceability. It's one of the keywords now uh, when we talk digital trade. Of course, we need to get a complete visibility of our products, what's valid when, so that we can uh, perform various analysis, whether change impact analysis, safety analysis, et cetera. And it's also important to help this in development process to increase efficiency. And, and it's, it's worth to mention that it's also not uh, uh, coming from the self-innovation aspects, but it's also for a lot of legal, regulatory compliance and legal purposes. It's, it's equally important to demonstrate that traceability. So what's our scenario? <clears throat> If you look at the strategy from Treton, Treton wants to be a global champion. And it's timing for become global champion by, by creating a synergy between its partners. The group is aiming to realize these significant synergies through operations, cooperations between Treton brands and partners. And one of the use cases that I'm going to demonstrate is exactly connected to that. So our scenario is this picture as I described earlier, Scania designs and develop components such as these gearbox engines and share them with our Triton partners. And then Triton or other partner engineers needs to collaborate with the Scania and try to integrate these components in their own vehicle components, primarily with the vehicle configurations and environments. And this is a very challenging part because 
every company has its own tooling, whether it's a PLM tooling, you name it, it's a different suppliers or product tools, whether it's Dassault, uh, PTC, Siemens, all the big uh, vendors, uh, and they are distributed in different companies. They have their own data models, own mechanisms, own product descriptions. So, so it's not just easy to send something and accommodate. Uh, there is a need of a high level of translation. As a design-owning brand, we would like to also keep a track of our component usage across these partners so that we, we know when something change, what really affects for our partners as well. So I think one of the topic in previous uh, conference topics came as a global configuration, if I picked up correctly. And I think that's also one of very crucial topic for us as well, as you can see from this picture. Uh, this business scenario is also applicable, as I said, not only for Scania, but in the reverse direction when MN or Navistar is the lead brand of the component. So solution that we are aiming is to support this engineering data exchange across our partner community. And this is happening pretty much daily operations. It's, it's a real time data exchange. And when I say real time, it means during the development of the components. And then of course, when SOP or startup production comes, then you also have a maintenance cycle of the components, which requires a very formalized change management uh, and uh, quality management. So various interesting challenges we deal with in this uh, use case. One of the normal or the very high level challenges you can see here, each brand has its own system landscape, uh, different data models, the methods, and of course the most important, the product description methods, how, how you maintain your variants, how you maintain your product structures, how you, meant, how you generate your bill of materials, uh, e-bombs and so on. So they do not match and that's the challenge. Uh, that's a high level, one of the key challenge. But it's even more further than that, that the challenges are also within each brand. And I'm talking just for Scania, but I'm sure this is the same challenges we also hear and see when we interact with these uh, partners. The challenges are that there are many systems and many domains within each company, especially like, like uh, you, you have described earlier as well, requirements, system architecture, design, mechanical design, verifications, structure management, change management, and so on. So we do would like to have this work with the mechanical services, embedded software as, as a whole cybersecurity, uh, <clears throat> compliant and uh, cyber physical systems in going forward, which requires the digital thread establishment around all these domains. And I, I'm, I'm quite happy to see that uh, most of the presentations are really reflecting the same need uh, in a more or less uh, same way. So this challenge is actually make life even more harder to do this uh, use cases what we are talking. Many information models, many system, not everything is connected. And then there is a clear need of configuration change management, which is very critical to, to know the, the impact of changes. So the need was or need is to, to maintain the modularity. Uh, that's one of the key pillar of Scania to, to describe our products in a modularized way. And of course we would like to keep that as a, our foundation. Other need is the solutions needs to have a federated approach, means the master data and the user remains in their primary systems. Even they would like to exchange the information work with another context. Uh, of course, we would like to reduce the manual efforts as much as we can so that the automated data exchange helps with the process. Uh, Multi-band solution and access control. So the challenges that you you work with a different access mechanism, access control, over the wire, in the firewalls, and so on. They, they are important. And, and we have come, come over this challenge, at least uh, with the, with the multi-brand identity federation and uh, single sign-on and so on. But I think this is one of the interesting challenge also for system authentications. Then we talk about data sharing traceability, which is also very important. What did you share? When did you share? Did do I see the same version that I received what you sent and etc. 
And of course, the data correlation traceability, which I'm going to talk a little bit more how we have solved with this help of the solution. So our solution approach to this challenge is to build the operational data layer with the help of knowledge graph technology, primarily focusing using RDF uh, as a main data modeling method. And of course, we would like to connect this with our other solution components, which is right now not part of this presentation, but we need much more than just this one. Uh, I got to very basic, like how we, we started and how we expanded our concept. So very basic, I think some of you have seen this idea of the triples, how they work with the, with the object, uh, subject and the predicate describing the relationship, and then you understand the meaning out of it. We just take that concept and forward it to our uh, data exchange needle. So as, as you can see in this picture that the design on brand is sharing the changes, the components and parts and the associated documents, whether it's a 2D, 3D tech documents, it could be simulation report, test report, et cetera. Of course, there is an internal change happening within the company, but now we are talking, sharing them with multiple partners. So we need the, this middle layer sharing and traceability and the mapping of the information. And mapping is because some of these components you cannot just replicate. You need to create your own new identity to fit in your local systems. So that then this also becomes even more critical. And this middle part, the, the exchange part, the data integration part is something we have tried to solve using this uh, OCR concept. And this is the solution that is for mapping, traceability, translations, and harmonize the vocabulary around this data semantics. And that help us to keep everything connected. And that's a really, really good part of this uh, solution. As an information view, an example, high level, that we have a part that we identified as a common part, which is primarily designed by one of the brand. It can also be a joint development, but in this example, it's, uh, it's let's say owned by Scania. When we share and create that part and send it to the partner, we partner creates its own identity. It's, it documents in its own tools, whether it's a PLM tools or uh, any other structure tools. That identity needs to be cross-referenced back to the, our identity so that we know what is the correlated equivalent part on the other side. This part is also possibly can be shared by the partner with the other partner. And we have seen various use cases where we, we have a big component and some part of the component is designed by someone else. So it could be that the larger component is designed by Scania, but the, the small component within that is designed by mine. And if that component is used at Navistar, then the, this information needs to also be established. Especially now in this case, when this particular part is shared by mine to Navistar, as a design owning brand, you also need to have that information with you. And this happens with some manual exchange or some internal system exchange. But this dotted line is equally important so that the scanner gets the full knowledge of its usage of the component or part. This is something you don't, we don't need to create now with the so-called manual routines. The system takes care of that so-called linked known or unknown relationship that needs to exist. So this is something uh, OCR system helps to, with the reasoning in the linked data, uh, concept to help to create the system identified relation and then create an automated flow around it. So this is a, a, a concept that we can apply on the on the part, but then we take it to the to the next level because we are not only talking about one object uh, part; we are talking about many objects here, and this is just an some example of that that we, the object could be owned or used by Scania, Navistar, or MI, or it could be also other future brands in future. So these Scania objects, they have their own products and components, and each has these multiple parts, as, as you can see a part of being. This common part has its own internal relation between brands. These parts are used and affected by other partners. There's a change management around it. 
which also eventually from this common change is, is connected to the internal change management from each company. There is also some of the failure issues, quality issues that can trigger this change management process, which also has its own internal issues that where the failure uh, is primarily detected or documented. We need to have the traceability from, from all of these objects. And also, as I said, parts has the documents and they are of also different types. So this particular solution that we have, uh, we have developed uh, and, and it's, uh, it's uh, in production uh, for, for most, most of the part, uh, which is quite, quite a satisfactory uh, uh, step for us. Uh, when we talk about technical architecture now a little bit, so we primarily focused on uh, getting this in, in a, some kind of a common information model so that uh, each, each company can describe their components or parts in a certain way so that we all can relate to each other. That was the primary use case. And that's something with the help of uh, RDF, it was, it was feasible to do that. We tried that in this kind of uh, complex relationship previously with the uh, relational databases or even NoSQL, that's not where it fits very well. It, it becomes very hard to scale that up. But the, with the help of Graph and with the help of RTF, it becomes much more controlled and, and very well uh, defined. Uh, using primarily the AWS component, we have achieved pretty much most of it. So at the RDF triple store, it's the Amazon Neptune uh, as a store. And with the, with a few services built on top of it, we call the query service, triple service, linking and reasoning services. They help us to, to orchestrate this data, to help us to uh, describe the data and ontology around it. There's also something called Neptune stream, which is quite interesting so that it, it's like a SQL trigger in traditional relation databases. You, you can detect the change on an RDF triple creation or RDF triple change that can fire an event that one can listen to and then react on that as well. Uh, so here in the common layer, the services, of course, it's a simplified picture, but the service is primarily built with the help of Gina framework, uh, and, and multiple AWS component like uh, pop sub mechanism with SNS SKS. And this is connected to then various brand legacy systems here uh, from, from each companies. Uh, and we also provided a common user interface where this information can be looked up by users from different brands in a very consistent way. Here yeah. we talk about. Uh, you're, you're about to about three minutes now. So, yeah, okay. I will uh, probably I'm catching up quickly now, then. Thank you. Uh, so, we talk about OSLC as, as one of the key contributors to this uh, integration, uh, but it's, it's, it hasn't been that easy. Mainly, there are, many, there are different challenges when you integrate with these uh, legacy systems, and I, I can just summarize in one line. When it comes to LM tools like Jira, Polaria, and GitLab, and so on, I think they have much better native support for this kind of uh, integrations. But it doesn't really work smoothly when it comes to custom built uh, applications, especially the home built. Uh, so this, this particular area needs to scale up. And this is how the application look like uh, for, for end user. So we, we see the part number scan connected to MI and Navista and, and all those relations. And if you make a new relation, it automatically appear and everyone can take a good look at it. And there is also some kind of life cycle and change log around it. So in short, the summary of this is, it's a really good solution for cross-reference needs. It's um, based on modern data-driven approach. Uh, so, so change happen and we listen and then we react kind of uh, approach. Primarily with the idea of technology, it's easy to scale with the multi-brand scenarios, adding new relation with a new brand object is it's pretty much adding an instance. It can be used for mapping any kind of objects. It doesn't need to be just part drawing. It could be versions and so on. Data is managed consistently via REST APIs. Each brand don't need to develop and maintain similar cross-reference solutions. Only one standardized interface is sufficient for everyone. Data is managed across and owned by each brand in line in their application. And then, of course, we get a good scalability with the cloud infrastructure. 
the, 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 the part here is instead of building too many smart and complex application, let's try to build a smart data. So we have a few learnings that we would like to just highlight here. I mean, it's we are still learning this process and then probably the tools that we learned today was quite, quite probably interesting for us to look further. So graph data model is definitely very flexible method compared to traditional uh, relations and NoSQLs. Solution is much better prepared for advanced use cases like AI and machine learning. IDF is powerful. However, there's a steep learning curve and it's very difficult to work uh, and find competence around this area. So that's also one of the limiting factors uh, to scale the solutions. Uh, we, we need to ensure that we keep the end user view and usage in mind when we describe these ontologies, because that also uh, impact the performance of the, of the operations. Uh, for consumer application, the interface, we think and we saw that the GraphQL endpoint is much, much easier and better approach on top of triple store to consume the information. Uh, it introduces a lot of complexity. However, uh, when you talk to system to system integration, the Sparkle and OSLC is quite, quite good. OSLC is very good and helpful when we talk about object references with the delegated UI, especially as I mentioned in the LM domain, but it's hard with the legacy system. Uh, and maybe what we saw is it's quite promising now. We need a better tooling and developing framework around this to get going. So what are the possible steps for us? We would like to, of course, include more information objects so that it, uh, it, it provides some more traceability for more information areas. We would like to also scale this as a federated solution from each partner. So what I mean is basically these triple stores can be sitting in different areas with their own data and we just then do the federated queries. And of course, provide the OSS links to the key objects. And at the end, it's also important to have a better analysis and visualization tool so that we understand this uh, information data layer in a better way. I think I'm pretty much at the end of my slide. Thank you. And uh, if there are any Q&A questions, uh, please uh, go ahead. Yes.